today's webinar on our new reading and writing series, Journey to Success. I'm Sue Willie, the Sales, Marketing, and Business Operations Director for New Readers Press, and we're very excited to introduce this new product to you. Um, periodically, we send out customer surveys, which hopefully you take the time to answer. And we've received a lot of feedback on what is needed in a low-level reading and writing series and really try to incorporate that feedback into the new series that we just developed. Um, so just a little housekeeping. Everyone is muted today, but I encourage you, if you have any questions, to type them in the chat box, and we will stop periodically throughout the webinar and address any questions you might have. Um, a popular question is always, will the webinar be recorded, and will you receive copy of the PowerPoint? And the answer to both of those questions is yes. So by early next week, you should receive something from us. And if you don't, uh, please let us know. So we're going to get started now. And I'd like to introduce you to Greg Stokes, who's our product trainer. And he's going to walk you through all of the great features and benefits of this new product. So. Take it away, Greg. Okay, thanks, Sue. Hi, and welcome. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. I'm Greg Stoltz, the New Reader's Press product trainer. And today, yes, I'm going to introduce our brand new reading and writing series, Journey to Success. Sue said, walk you through. I would love to walk you through lesson seven of book three, but in the interest of time, we'll jog instead, and I promise to, to keep things moving. <laughs> okay, so... I, I do have to say I've been excited about this series since its concept and the initial planning stages, and my enthusiasm has increased like a hundredfold with the debut of books three through six. Uh, an introductory level and books one and two are in the incubator, and they're scheduled to hatch in early 2019, and I can't wait for them. And the, there is a rich teacher guide that accompanies each level. And we're putting them on our website where you can download and photocopy them for F-R-E-E. -E. So uh, that said, to get us started, um, what I'd like to do is just uh, offer this quick poll. So if you would kindly participate. Uh, the question is, what interested you most about joining this webinar today. What is it that, uh, that interested you most? And you should see up there at the top the, um, the, uh, the, the four selections. So if you would kindly choose one of those and respond, we'll give you, we'll give you about 30 seconds, but uh, we're interested and you may be interested as well. So the choices were interested in evidence-based reading instruction, you're looking for a new reading and writing series, you're looking for a low-level reading series to prepare for pre-HE level work, or you're looking for a reading and writing series that's correlated to the college and career readiness standards in TABE 1112. So I think we will close up and see um, what folks thought. Wow, that's interesting. Look at that. Pretty level across the board. That's great. So some in evidence-based reading, some looking for new reading and writing, low-level reading series, reading and writing. Yeah, it's pretty equal across the board. And that's great news. Even better news is that you're going to learn over the next 30, 40 minutes that uh, – that uh, in, in fact it does exactly what you're what you're looking for, and uh, why don't we jump in and I'll show you just how. Let me give you a bird's eye view of the series first, and then we'll zoom in and uh, and look at a lesson up close. For starters, the number on the front cover is the NRS reading level. So here, level four. That's an NRS reading level four. There are 12 lessons across four strategically themed units. The work and life skills readings address topics relevant to today's adults. Social studies and the science units introduce content important for future high school equivalency level work. 
And the literature units are authentic pieces of literature uh, to build a fire. Uh, what else is it? A Little Women, uh, Aesop's Fables, just to name a few, uh, the, the, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz. And they've been adapted to the appropriate reading level. There's a review for every unit and grammar mini lessons in the back of each book where the answer key is found as well. So we made the teacher guides free downloadable PDFs on our website so that the only thing you'll need to buy is student books. Inside, you'll find a scope and sequence, tailored lesson notes that include built-in additional activities and fluency, uh, activities for English language learners, additional extension activities even to, to further classroom learning. And there are also numerous photocopy masters and a level review that for assessment and for additional practice. But before we talk about Journey's content and methodology, we should spend a few minutes on research and standards. So five, what, six years ago, significant shifts in the college career readiness standards helped bring about changes in reading particularly in regards to classroom instruction. That first instructional shift is complexity. Especially in adult education, we need to be sure that students are reading texts that aren't too easy for them, but aren't too difficult either. And complex in this sense doesn't mean hard, it means texts worth reading, texts that challenge the students in new ways while still being accessible to their level of ability. Complex texts generally have new vocabulary, more complex structures and purposes, and lengthier sentences and paragraphs. Next, students are looking for evidence. We need to help them become Sherlock and Shirley Holmes as they read. So to answer the questions and writing prompts we give them, they have to rely on the text they've read and instead of old prompts like, tell me about a time when you experienced fill in the blanks, students have to revisit what they've read to uncover meaning, details, and inferences. Lastly, reading of informational texts to develop content knowledge. The texts introduce students to new ideas and topics worth learning workplace memos and handbooks, technical texts like science articles. Yes, students are reading things to learn new academic skills and reading strategies, but at the same time, they're gaining knowledge in topics relevant to adult learners. So what about these academic skills and reading strategies? Well, let's talk about evidence-based reading instruction. Evidence-based reading instruction is instructional strategies that are grounded in data and feedback about student improvement. According to the National Reading Panel, Susan McShane's works, there are four principles of evidence-based reading instruction. These are also what the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act and the Student Achievement in Reading, or the STAR Project, for those of you who are familiar with it, consider to be essential components of reading. Alphabetics is essential, the combination of skills that allow readers to identify words in print. We can't take for granted that our adult learners have a good handle on this. Working on word analysis, um, word parts and word families is going to increase student success with reading. Vocabulary is essential. It's essential for a reader to know what words mean to be able to get meaning from the text, but also as the reader's vocabulary grows, she or he will be able to read a broader variety of materials and at higher levels. Comprehension. Reading comprehension skills and strategies are vital as they're going to help the reader understand things like how the information is organized, how to 
extract and organize that information, combine it with other things, and then uh, apply it uh, to, to other areas. And fluency is essential, reading quickly and accurately so that the effort is on comprehension instead of decoding words and putting them together in sentences. Fluency is also reading with proper emphasis and inflection, or what we call prosody, which adds meaning to what's being read. And as reading becomes easier, it's apt to make it more enjoyable, which increases motivation. And that's a good thing. And of course, a student's motivation to read isn't just fueled by visible progress, but also by connecting reading materials to personal interests, including learning and life goals, whether they're academic or job related, right? So Journey will help students reach those goals by fo focusing on the four essential components of reading, and using methodology like direct or explicit instruction, explaining a new skill, giving clear examples and modeling the skill, then providing guided practice so that they can apply it outside of the text, possibly outside the lesson, the classroom, uh, a before, during, and after technique for reading comprehension, process writing, instruction and practice targeting those three major shifts in the college career readiness standards, right? Text complexity, evidence, and knowledge. Fluency work, graphic organizers, and topics that promote critical thinking and discussion. So here's the journey roadmap. The lessons you'll see follow a consistent format. First, a lesson opener, then using vocabulary terms and tips, followed by two reading passages. And you know what, let me stop there for, for a second. Two reading passages in each lesson. That's 12 lessons in each level, 24 reading practices, folks, not counting the unit and the level reviews is pretty great. Okay, the next, developing your understanding followed by a specific writing skill and practice, and ending with reflection and discussion. Taking a closer look, the opener introduces students to lesson objectives, listing the skills students will practice in the lesson, and it calls out key and content vocabulary words along with their definitions. And you know what, we're gonna camp here on vocabulary for a minute or so. Vocabulary words can be divided into three tiers. Our tier one words, our most basic words, we don't need to teach them because the students already know them, right? Tier two words are higher level words that are found in more sophisticated texts and across a variety of content and genres. These words are less likely to be part of the student's current vocabulary. And then there are the tier three words, specialized vocabulary words, and they're domain specific, like uh, health or finance words. So Journey features vocabulary instruction on those last two tiers, with an emphasis on the tier two words. Focusing instruction on tier two words gives students the expanded vocabulary they need to read higher level, more sophisticated texts and express themselves better in both writing and speaking. Vocabulary, use the vocabulary. Vocabulary is one of our four principles of evidence-based reading instruction, right? Pre-reading vocabulary questions, focus on a student's prior knowledge and personal experiences. I mean, what's an effective way of drawing learners in and keeping them engaged? You make it about them, right? I mean, isn't that everybody? I mean, I love to talk about me. You take a look at a, a few of these questions 
You know, who can you depend on for help with your schoolwork? How would you describe the environment where you live? Describe time when you did the opposite of what you had planned to do, right? And, and on and on, what are some ways to stay active during the winter? So all about you. Effective vocabulary practice should be more than just memorization and include both writing and discussion opportunities. And this is a strong example of direct instruction at work. We talked about that just a second ago. Direct instruction, the key vocabulary was explained, modeled, and used prior to reading the passage so that students can apply what they've learned as they read the words in context and with improved comprehension. A vocabulary tip follows the use the vocabulary activity. And these tips are great because they align to anchor four in the college career language strand, which reads, determine or clarify the meaning of unknown and multiple meaning words and phrases by using context clues, analyzing meaningful word parts, and consulting general and specialized reference materials as appropriate. The, the tip on the slide here is on clarifying the meaning of multiple meaning words. This one, this tip, it's from lesson eight of book three, is on using context clues. Right? When you read a word you don't know, pay attention to what the nearby words and sentences are about. This is called the context. And yet another, this one from lesson one, using a dictionary to find the meaning and identify the part of speech. And that aligns with consulting general and specialized reference materials as appropriate. Now, as we move into the readings, we see the before, during, and after technique that I mentioned being employed to improve comprehension. Comprehension, another essential component of reading. The students are directed to use strategies like previewing, as shown in this example, uh, but also using prior knowledge, setting a purpose for reading, making predictions, skimming. Now, during the reading, text directs students to interact with a passage by doing things like answering questions in the margins while reading or visualizing, which actually are, are both shown here. If you read the interactive strategy embedded in instruction, this is just in the margins, what do you picture about bats that eat insects? So they're answering questions in the margins while reading, and this happens to be instructing them to visualize as they read. But there are also others like making connections, drawing conclusions, and, and, and so on. These before and during reading techniques engage the students and they promote healthy interactive reading habits. Okay, going back to the standards, Anchor 7 reads, Integrate and evaluate content presented in diverse media and formats, including visually and quantitatively, as well as in words. And you know what? Journey doesn't let us down. It is packed with charts, diagrams, maps, photos, and especially the graphic organizers. <clears throat> After each reading, there's a comprehension check, followed by a specific reading skill that, once again, is aligned to the standards. Reading strand anchor two, determine central ideas or themes of a text and analyze their development, summarize the key supporting details and ideas. Some of the reading skills that you'll see throughout the journey series, identify key points and supporting details. Summarize, cause and effect, understanding sequence, making inferences. This one happens to be on comparing and contrasting. 
Graphic organizers like this Venn diagram are used in some of the reading skills activities to help create a visual representation of the skill. And by the way, students are working with the same reading skill in both of the lesson readings. Here again is that comparing and contrasting from the previous slide. Each reading passage in the lesson includes fluency work. Fluency, one of the four principles of evidence-based reading instruction. Echo reading, choral reading, reading to the teacher, or in, in this example, paired reading. Fluency practice bats cleanup in the journey series, and not by accident. By the time students get to the fluency practice, they're familiar with the text. They worked with the vocabulary. They worked on comprehension. So now when they read for speed and accuracy, emphasis and inflection, they should notice marked improvement. And that is motivating. Develop your understanding continues the learning experience. First, by sending, what do we call them, Shirley and Sherlock, back to the text with a magnifying glass in hand to respond to the readings. Close reading, citing evidence is necessary to answer the questions. And why? How about reading strand anchor one? Read closely to determine what the text says explicitly and to make logical inferences from it. Cite specific textual evidence when writing or speaking to support conclusions drawn from the text. Next, built into every lesson, students will analyze and use word parts, prefixes, suffixes, compound words. Not only does this touch on alphabetics, but we can follow the vocabulary breadcrumbs right back to language strand anchor four that we've seen before, determine or clarify the meaning of unknown and multiple meaning words, analyzing meaningful word parts. Develop Your Understanding ends with three additional vocabulary review exercises. So why so heavy on vocabulary? Why? Because it's tied to everything. <laughs> it's, it's an essential component of reading, one of the four principles of evidence-based reading instruction. It feeds into students reading appropriately complex texts. It feeds into their search for evidence. It feeds into their increased content knowledge. And how about language strand anchor six? Acquire and use accurately a range of general academic, those are those tier two words, and domain specific, the tier three words, and phrases sufficient for reading, writing, speaking, and listening at the college and career readiness level. Demonstrate independence and in gathering vocabulary knowledge when encountering an unknown term important to comprehension or expression. I, I mean, there it is, folks. Vocabulary is crucial. Okay, right. Keep moving. So, <laughs> I got a little worked up. We're nearing the end of the lesson. Now it's time to write. As you can see, the writing skills being honed are transferable. They're satisfying both academic and workforce needs. Narrative, opinion, process, informational, procedural, cover letters, journal entries, reports, safety plans, transferable skills for both academic and workforce needs. In keeping with writing strand, Anchor 5 reads, develop and strengthen writing as needed by planning, revising, editing, rewriting, or trying a new approach. Journey teaches process writing. Brainstorm, draft, revise and edit, take it out of the oven. Each writing exercise begins with an explanation and model of the writing skill. And then students will practice the skill with guidance, as you'll see, from the text and apply it. So you got explanation, modeling, guided practice, application. 
What is it? Direct instruction, right? Here you see a graphic organizer helps students sort information, thoughts, and ideas for writing. And did you notice the graphic organizer in this writing revisits the compare and contrast skills students have been practicing throughout the lesson. I think that's pretty cool. Instruction and guided practice continues as students write their first draft, then use an editing checklist to check their work. And uh, if you see there on the right-hand side, they also have an opportunity to work on grammar as some lessons direct them, using that little, that little icon there, uh, to a grammar mini lesson in the back of the book. Wrapping up the lesson, a think and discuss activity gives students the opportunity to think beyond the reading. Using academic language in discussion, listening to, and collaborating with their peers. Let's look at speaking and listening strand anchor one. Prepare for and participate effectively in a range of conversations and collaborations with diverse partners building on others' ideas and expressing their own clearly and persuasively. And optionally, to squeeze even more from the lesson, the instructor could also have students write a response, turn that think and discuss into one more writing opportunity. The grammar minis that I showed you earlier are in the back of the student book, and they address language strand anchor one, demonstrate command of the conventions of standard English grammar and usage when writing or speaking. Answer key is in the back as well, and that is the end of the student book. Sue, is this a, a good time to pause? We can pause. We've got just a poll question. <clears throat> Thank you, Greg. So Greg has basically walked you through an entire lesson, and you're going to find every lesson is laid out exactly the same. So you can use the books in sequential order, non-sequential order. Um, and so we're going to just, uh, after now that you've seen a little bit, we just wanted to ask you, so now that you've had a chance to review a complete lesson, what feature do you like the best? The fact that there's contextualized readings in science and social studies, contextualized readings in literature and life and work, multiple opportunities to practice and build new vocabulary, standards-based reading and writing skills built into each lesson, or the variety of functional and academic writing activities. Just wondering what everyone's thoughts were and what they thought were one of the great features So what, I can't read that far. What are we seeing there is what folks like the most? So far leading the way, multiple opportunities to practice. Uh, you know what, standards-based reading and writing skills and the variety of functional and academic writing, uh, all neck and neck really. Okay, so you'll find all of those in every lesson. So we just wanted to re-stress that to everyone. Um, I have not gotten any questions in the chat box yet, so if anyone has any questions, feel free to type them in, and Greg is going to pick up now and do a review of what you'll find in the teacher guides. Teacher's guides, yep. So if you'll permit me, I'll point out just a few of the features in the teacher's guide that really stand out, and I will wrap it up and call it a day. So first, there's a handy scope and sequence that calls out lesson topics, uh, reading and writing skills, reading strategies, and grammar instruction. I like the way this is laid out. It's clean. You can just quickly find what you're looking for. Handy. Next, there are tailored notes that include lesson introductions discussion starters, uh, the, the pre-teaching the vocabulary there, that's 
direct instruction for vocabulary, tips for engaging English language learners, and then on into reading strategies. In addition to extension ideas for both in and outside the classroom, this one is having them use the internet find out what species of bats are common or whether people make local honey, have backyard hives, and then invite them to share their findings in class. There are also extra activities to extend the learning for English language learners. Uh, writing, talking about uh, their own culture or home country. Photocopy masters. Oh my goodness, There's tons of photocopy masters. This is just this is just the teacher's guide to uh, book three, and there are 13. There are things like here uh, shown a, is a vocabulary rating chart for self-assessment and review. That's just one of several useful masters. And then there are numerous assorted graphic organizers. Again, that you are welcome to download and photocopy for use in the class. And last but not least, a level review with four additional passages. One work, one social studies, one science, one literature, providing additional practice, level assessment, and review. Folks, Levels three, four, five, and six are available now. The introductory level and levels one and two are coming soon. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is journey to success. A quick recap, you've got work and life skills, social studies, science, literature. It's built on the principles of evidence-based reading instruction and the essential components of reading as defined by WIOA and STAR. It's correlated to the College Career Readiness Standards and TABE 1112. It prepares adult learners reading at lower levels with the content knowledge, vocabulary, reading comprehension and writing skills, fluency, and let's not forget confidence and motivation needed to move up to high school equivalency test preparation and or into the workforce. I could, I could go on and on. Sales hat off, teachers hat on. I think this series is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Greg. Thank you. Um, so hopefully you have all learned what Journey to Success is about by going through a lesson with Greg. Greg did a great job. Um, for anyone joining in today's webinar, is an additional thank you if you're interested in purchasing the product. Uh, we're offering a 10% discount through the end of November. I will say that uh, I think we missed the slide. A single student book is $15.50. If you're a pro literacy member, you would get a 25% discount off of that. Um, if you're not a member, but you purchase more than five of any single book, there would be an additional 20% discount. And so a 10% on top of what discounts you might already have. You can go on our website and check things out. And there's the promotion code that you can use, JTS Web. Um, and so you can visit our website. I'm going to stay open for just a couple of minutes to see if we do have any questions that pop up. And Jennifer, can you just go to the last slide? There should be one more there. There we go. And I just also want to invite everyone, um, at, since New Readers Press is Pro Literacy's publishing division, I'd just like to invite everyone to save the date for our Pro Literacy Conference on Adult Education out in beautiful San Diego, California, next September 25th through the 28th. Um, our conference brings together program managers, directors, and instructors from CBO and AB programs throughout the United States. 
and our call for proposals will be opening up on November 1st. So if you know anybody who um, is a great presenter, let them know to go ahead to the pro-literacy website and submit. Um, oh, it looks like we do have some questions. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, do you want to read them? Sure. Um, okay, so the first question, does direct instruction mean teacher-led? That's a great question. Yes, direct or explicit instruction is uh, teacher-led. Usually that's what it's considered, but if you define it, direct instruction or explicit instruction, having something explained, then examples given and having that modeled, guided practice provided, and, and then the application. So in my opinion, uh, when you look at something like the journey series, you'll find that often that explicit instruction is embedded right into, in, into, into the book itself and into the text. All right, thank you. Um... Let's see, we have another, we have a couple more. Okay. I can read this one. Your example was of affixes, does journey study word roots to derive meaning? Yes, yeah. it does, as a matter of fact. That's a great question. I um, forgot to mention word roots, didn't I? I don't know. Uh, let's Previous see, is this series strictly for teacher-directed learning? Yeah, yes. again, I would say yes, you're going to want uh, teacher direction, but as I just stated, you'll find often as they're working in the book, you know, they're, they're guided, uh, for example, in the margins during the reading, uh, during the reading process, um, the, uh, the pre-reading exercises, but most effective is going to be instructor led. Um, are there CD or DVD materials? That answer is no, there are not. Um, have comments been made about the cost of printing teacher guides may not be covered in budgets? Well, that's a good, you know, we always struggle with whether the teacher guides should be available for a free download or whether we should print them and have folks pay for them. I would say that, you know, if you just need like one teacher guide and it really isn't in your budget to call our customer service team and we could probably print something here and send it to you. Um, if you wanted a number of them that we would be printing for you, there might be a small fee, but if it seems to be an issue for your program, definitely give us a call and uh, we'll we'd be happy to work with you. The next question is how many lessons? Every book has 12 lessons, four, um, three lessons on life and work skills, three lessons on social studies, three lessons on science, and three lessons on literature. Sue, so can I tackle one here? Yeah. Uh, there there uh, is at least one person who asked about uh, the possibility of a complimentary promotional copy to see the book before we order. That's definitely a possibility. I would also encourage folks who uh, who, who don't want to wait, uh, especially to um, to go on to our website. That's newreaderspress.com, and under core reading, click on it. It should be your first choice up. Uh, click on journey to success and the level book that you're interested in and it will say uh, look uh, look uh, look inside i think is what it says isn't it yep um and then if you click on that look inside you'll find that they are, they are actually downloadable pdf pages one complete lesson one complete lesson that's like 24 25 pages including the full table of contents you'll get a really good look at the series this way folks um, yep, so feel free to do that and call customer service if, if you have to have a printed copy. Um, you know, again, we'd be happy to accommodate you. Uh, will this presentation be available after this is over? Absolutely. We will send both the recording and the presentation uh, by early next week. Does this series work best in classroom settings or is one-on-one -on -one tutoring? I think it could work for either. 
Greg, anything else to add to that? No, it's, it's very flexible. That's, that's one of the strong points of the series. Are these lessons accessible to low beginning English language learners or are they better for middle intermediate learners? Uh, to be completely honest, the series was developed for adult basic education. Hmm. That said, we do have some tips if you're working with ELL learners in the teacher guide, but I would say they would probably be more high beginning maybe coming out of the ESL classroom and starting to get into ABE instruction, yeah. but definitely not for the lowest level um, English language learner. Not at these levels, yeah. For transitioning ELLs or those that are at like a, a low intermediate and above, then yeah, perfectly fine. You know, and of course that's case by case, but you guys mm -hmm. know that. Why did you begin with the higher levels rather than intro one and two? That's a very good question. Yep. Um, I believe that we were trying to stick with um, some of the STAR principles and really focusing books three through six. Uh, first of all, with, if you're with a STAR program, it does start at a level three. But we were also trying to make this series something that a lot of customers were asking for, which was pre-pre-HSE level instruction. So that's why we decided, if you're familiar with the Endeavor series, this is basically going to be replacing that. Um, so we decided to start with level three, and then the lower levels will really be getting more into that alphabetics and really uh, learning to read type of um, right. information. Our representatives at conferences and when they make program visits, talk to you folks over the phone, talk to customer service, they're all hearing the same thing. There are so many learners, adult learners out there that want their high school equivalency diploma yesterday, but they're reading at a third, fourth, fifth grade reading level. And so the cry seemed to be really uh, almost unanimous. And that was, these are the levels we are desperate for to you know to quickly advance our learners to to a to a place where they can study HSE at level. Okay, Greg, can you get Terry? There's a question here I'm sure. gonna have to come back to and ask her about. Um what grade level books are four to six? They're really based on the reading level. So as Greg said at the beginning, the national reading the NRS standard. So a level uh, book three would be a level three reading, book four would be a level, grade four reading level. Um, Terry, a question that I wasn't sure how to answer. Our editor just came in. It is in a multi-level classroom, is there a correlation between each book on content standards? So a lesson can be taught to a standard and students in levels three, four, five, and six would have similar pages. Hmm. Um, there are sometimes similar skills taught from one level to the next. So you could look at either the scope and sequence or um, the table of contents and choose like a reading at two different levels where that lesson had compatible skills um, at two different levels. But I don't think it was designed in a way, level. yeah. So like I said, I, I'm sure there's a way to do it if you look at the scope and sequence or, or even the table of contents or those first pages, you know, the first page of each unit shows what's covered um, so you would be able to find compatible things for students at different levels. And our last question was, is there a placement test? There is not a placement test. Uh, we were envisioning tape probably being used or passed as you a could. Test. Yes. Also, um, there are kind of short end of book review tests 
that we're posting online for each level. And so maybe that could help you to determine level if, you know, if you gave students one of those end of book tests, you could kind of tell whether they were beyond that level or not. Okay, I think that is it for questions. Um, if you have any others, I just realized we neglected to put our contact information up there. So please go to our website, newreaderspress.com. There's a place that says contact us. And if you have any questions, feel free to send those questions through um, our customer service department. And there, we're all in the same building so they can get those questions right to us. So again, thank you everyone for participating. And thank you, Greg, for a great presentation. Thanks, Sue. It was fun. Thanks, everyone.